Good day, everyone. Hi, my name is Danny Pankratz. I'm director of community here at Uncork, and I'm super excited to welcome you all to our Uncork Twitch channel and a show that we're doing for the second time. It's our monthly Uncork Community Success Hour. So if you didn't see our broadcast last month, what Success Hour is, it's kind of a mix of office hours meets webinar. Instead of one long topic, we're taking a lot of frequently asked questions, tips and tricks and best practices, and we're demoing them for you. And I am so excited about today's session because it's the first time every demo is from one of our community members. And that's our goal long term. So for those of you who are part of our community or getting involved becoming an Uncork creator, I invite you all to reach out, to sign up, uh, to uh, participate, to share your insights, tips and tricks and things like that. And the great part of this is, you know, obviously this is going to be a great session live for all of this, but the recording is going to be available after uh, afterwards, we're going to take these short demos, and we're going to take these popular questions on the community, and we're going to add them in uh, to the post. So when people find these answered questions later on, not only do they have the written answer uh, previously, but they also get this uh, demo of, uh, of a hot topic or um, a tip or trick. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen quickly to just go over some, some highlights for you about what's going on in our community. You can always find this on our community hub. That's going to be at community.uncork.com. And even if you're not logged in, you're going to be able to see kind of the highlights of what we have going on. So we have our main forums at the top, but usually we have anywhere from three to five or six things highlighted. I want to spend time today highlighting a couple of events coming up over the next couple of weeks, especially this week. This is a great week for live streaming. We have this event today. Tomorrow, our Uncork CEO is doing his regular coffee and no code live streams on LinkedIn. So this is a good reminder that uh, if you didn't find out about today's Twitch live stream by following us on our social channels, we're active on LinkedIn, we're active on Twitter, obviously on Twitch and some other platforms. So follow us on LinkedIn if you haven't, that's the best way to get notified when we do these LinkedIn live streams, or you can follow Gary, our CEO there too, uh, when because um, uh, he's often sharing a lot about codeless architecture, Uncork, things like that. But we have a great conversation tomorrow lined up, as you can see there, um, with the, the president of Individual Life and Financial Services at One America. And then I'm really excited for Thursday. If you've been involved in our community the last couple months, you know that we did our first community hackathon. So we're doing a live showcase this Thursday of the finalists. We had a number of submissions from the community. This was an asynchronous hackathon where we put out a prompt a challenge to the community and invited everyone to build an application that showcased the, the power of Uncork. And it could be any app. So as you can see from our finalists, we got some a mix of things. We got some kind of business-focused applications, like a lot of the apps that are built on Uncork. But it was an, also an opportunity for our creators to try out a couple of different topics topics, some fun topics. Um, so one of our finalists did a book review application. We have a rock, paper, scissors game, as well as some very, as I mentioned, business applicable things like an HR candidate feedback or a simple messaging app that could be used a lot of ways. And then also on the community hub for the other submissions who weren't our finalists, uh, but were comfortable sharing it, we're posting uh, a couple other submissions. Uh, uh, like um, uh, one yesterday was a um, Sorry, uh, it's, it, the words escape me. A cricket game, uh, match scheduling and scoreboard thing that was was scheduled. So not only can you check out the demos of these um, on Thursday, but you'll eventually we'll share them and you can take a look at the configuration as well to see how that was built. But success hour today, I'm going to show you what we're talking about today. We have our presenters from our community, as I mentioned. We're covering a number of topics, and the purpose of success hour is to highlight best practices, tips and tricks, and demo popular questions in our community. So uh, first up, we're going to have Push Barrage talking about custom inline search. And then we have a number of demos on things for sorting data in the order of months, a page redirect, and then two uh, focused on view grids as well. Um, the last thing I'm going to leave you with is another area to stay up to date on what's going on with our community. In the navigation, if you click to update, we have this latest updates blog. As you can see, we're searching for speakers for next month's success hour. We already have one community member lined up. And next month's topic uh, is going to be here on Twitch again. And it's going to be focused on um, our marketplace, uh, celebrating the one-year anniversary of the marketplace there. So you can take a look at that. 
We have a community challenge for the month of June that I think I'm going to extend into July as well. But we're also publishing great things like our uh, updates on the latest documentation, things going on in the community. This is where you'll find out about Hackathon, but also big improvements. And one to highlight for you here is our documentation is now open and available. It's not behind uh, creator access or a login firewall to make it easier access, especially if you want to share it with um, fellow colleagues or if you're you're checking out on Cork, you want to dive a little bit deeper. Our documentation is open and all of these things are available on the community hub. Uh, and uh, updates and events are where you're going to probably find the, the most uh, relevant new uh, and exciting news or just keep an eye on what we feature here at the top. That's enough from me. Um, as I mentioned, I'm very excited that all of our presentations are from community members. Uh, so why don't we kick it off with our first presentation from Push Faraj, who's one of our community subject matter experts, recently earned that status a couple months ago. That's something uh, that you earn for uh, answering the most questions on the Community Hub, earning a lot of points over a three month period, and then answering at least 20 questions all the time, uh, and then staying super active. And Push Raj has been very active on the community. I appreciate all those contributions and very excited to have him talk to us about custom inline uh, search. So Push Raj, uh, uh, you can go ahead and uh, get, us, get us started. Sure, then, yeah. Thanks for the introduction. So let me share my screen. Yeah, so my screen is visible, right? Yep, we are seeing your uh, your browser with the, the search Correct. up. Yeah, so uh, this is like type ahead. Uh, there was a requirement in a project. So I've implemented the same way uh, for the POC. So let's say I'm typing uncock. So if you see the below are automatically populated. So we want we wanted certain feature, like we want to implement this thing in our application. So I've made a small POC for that. Let me just switch to it. So if you see uh, here is, let's say this is the browser search, something like we had in the browser and a user types uh, something else. Uh, let's say I'm typing Siddharth. So if you see, if I, when, as I type, the thing is getting auto-populated. If I type something else, RA. So if you see everything has RA in it. So all these things are auto-populated, uh, auto-populated. And as I select something, the name, age, uh, email ID, everything is uh, auto-populated. And as I clear, if I want to uh, search something, and let's say if I search Ashray. So for Ashray, uh, age, email ID, name, everything will be auto-populated. So to do this, what we have implemented is that first we have a, a DT where I'm storing. Actually, uh, eventually this data is coming to come from APIs. So for this demo, I've stored it in DT platform. Then in DT, uh, I have init onload. So init onload, what happens is that I am triggering one data workflow. And in data workflow, I'm taking the submissions from the DT and storing into hidden field. That is VG data. So now what happens is that uh, as user types here in search, I have this search item. And after that, I trigger uh, data workflow search. So this is another data workflow. This is one data workflow which is used to show the data which is going to show be shown on the VG data. So the search input is the uh, text field which user types, and I have a formula put here. That is in in number is number. Then I check argument and name. Name is nothing but the uh, field which I want to check, and that I pass to VG data. And this VG data is being used in this particular view grid VG data. And then I have uh, this certain conditions to be checked. Like if search term is more than uh, zero, like the size of it is more than zero, then itself I want to show, uh, show this particular view grid. Let's say if I have nothing here. So if you see the view grid has been disabled, but if I type something, then only it should be made visible. So that has been taken care of by this particular data workflow. And one more condition is that if I type something else, let's say X, Y, Z, so no data should be populated. So even then, in that case, I just need to make sure that this particular uh, view grid is not been shown. So that has been taken care of the search item and in VG data. So I check both the conditions. If this is uh, the size is more than zero and the data is not being present in that DT. So when these both the conditions are satisfied, I show that uh, data in the view grid. And then as user select something, uh, the data gets auto-populated. And then for simple uh, clear button, so that clear button triggers uh, rule and the rule uh, clears all the things, uh, all the text fields which we have. And also I have some CSS which uh, we have put. 
and that CSS is basically just to show that uh, this is in, in line in sync with this particular text field. So if you see the if I type on uh, browser, you see it's very close and all right. So similar functionality is required in our application. So we have been uh, using certain CSS to make sure that that happens. Uh, this particular is a snippet. So what we had done in our project is we kept we saved this using the snippet functionality of Uncock. And then we uh, captured the snippet and we uh, used it in a multiple ways. So basically, the functionality was same, just the data was coming from different fields and uh, had to be shown on different uh, uh, fields. That's all. So otherwise, the functionality remains same. So that was that uh, uh, feature which I wanted to showcase on this platform. Uh, yeah, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Great, thanks so much, Pushraj. Uh, a couple of things I wanna call out. Great job, I saw in your configuration, you're following Uncork best practices for naming uh, your various components. Saw that a lot with the VG for the view grid and the, the DFW, uh, things like that. Um, I believe uh, there's a link to this POC um, that's in the question already, or we can share it out, Pushraj, if people wanna yeah, take sure. a closer yeah, look yeah. at your config. I can, um, I can share so, it over. Yeah, so we'll, we'll post that along with the recording so on the community sure. hub uh, with this question yeah. so people can look uh, a little bit more closely at your solution there. Um, but appreciate you sharing that. I think this is, um, is a good feature to highlight as you started with Google was your, you know, the, the first place you started with, right? Showing us your, your browser and search and search is because such a key part of our, <clears throat> excuse me, of our ex expected experience with applications and things like that, the ability to search and find things. So um, uh, enabling that for the applications that you're building, I think is key. So appreciate that. Any of our, our fellow speakers here have any questions for Push Barrage about its configuration or how to do that? Otherwise we can move on to the next one. All right, I don't think I see any questions. So next up, as I look at my list here, we have Amar uh, who's been super active over the last couple months as well. I appreciate that on the community hub. Uh, Amar is uh, talking to us about how to sort the data in uh, order of months. Um, so Amar, take it away. Yep, good let me share my screen. Let me know once my screen is visible. Yeah, we're, we're seeing the express view of your screen. Yep, I'll go with the express view actually, okay. So here we can see it, the months are in unsorted order actually. Here the months are off and I used it in the full name also. We can uh, sort it in any of the ways actually. I'll, let, I'll just click it and... Yep, if you can see data list the list of the months which are sorted from jan to december both the or uh, both the uh, months have been sorted short as well as the full name and over here we can see one more uh, no, one more column which is relevant to the month number actually it represents the month number this is something i'll i'll defy i'll just explain it in the config so let me jump into my config actually okay so yep so here i have used to view grid which was that the unordered list and the second one is uh, displays this uh, the sorted list once we start it the next here is there are two data tables i have used it we can see it over here there is one data table which is used as an input that is the dt unsorted months so this kind this is like an input for in our application wherever we face it and the next data table is like it's the dt master yep so here we can see it the input can be of any type the month can be a uh, short name or the name of again so this is just an input which is unsorted an ordered list let me close this and <clears throat> yeah the next data table is the dt master month list so the name itself conveys that it's a master list. We have to maintain it to sort the months actually. 
So over here, you will be seeing the similar columns. The the additional column over here, month number, which number here, which represents the number of the month or the numeric month over here. So next, I'll move. It. Yeah. Over here, we can see the button, which is a simple button which just triggers the DWF. So the actual operation which takes uh, place is in the DWF. Yep. Over here we can see it a merge operation is taking place. So this merge operation takes as an input uh, two inputs. Sorry. Yep. So the merge operation takes as an input two inputs. The first is the unsorted months. Okay, and the second one is the sorted master list. Uh, it's not actually the sorted, it's the master list of the months. So the merge over here is the intersection. I have used it so that there can be more or less uh, unsorted months. We can get it as an input. Only that, you know, that months will be sorted. And yep, the next over here is the month number, which comes it comes from the month uh, master list actually. And over here we we, we just sort it. And yep, here this is the place where the actual sorting takes place. Next is the pick over here. This is just an uh, I used it to showcase the, in the view grid. Nothing major. Yep, and yep, and then you know, here is just an output. I have just deleted it. Yep. So this uh, is the simple steps which with which we can sort the months of any of where it can be of any type actually it can be a short or a full month over here so yeah so team great do, thank you so anyone much has questions over here yeah well i think this is yeah, very relevant you, i know from some of my work um some of my work for it just um you know some reporting and things like that uh structuring data the way the end user expected as for us you know months which aren't in alphabetical order or numerical order is, is a key step so um yeah I, I really like your poc amar being able to show what it looks like you know unsorted and sorted i think the most common use cases this is probably behind the scenes work right um to get it to to display as the user expects it in you know numerical order or um or, or calendar month order and things like that. So um, thank you for that. We're gonna have the recording of this um, and uh, links to the, the configuration if you wanna check out the work, similar to I mentioned with Push Barrage, up in that question that was answered about this um, so that you can ch check things out. Um, okay, so any, uh, any other comments from our other speakers or, or questions for Amar before we move on? All right, I don't think so. so uh, that brings us up to another thing. I think uh, as we're building applications, especially I think um, you know end user applications, you know maybe a lot of use cases for uh, loan origination, kind of sign up forms and things like that. I think it's going to be a frequent need of Uncork um, creators to be able to do this next thing, which is redirecting the page um, on an exit button. Uh, so there was a question that came up about how to do that. We have Madarika who, who answered that and is willing to demo for us here today. So Madarika, you're up next. Take it away. Okay, let me share my screen. Mm, yeah. Yep, we're seeing the question on the community hub. Uh, yeah, this is, was the question. Um, posted on community uh, which is about to, to say like a dynamic re a page redirect so let's start uh, with the understanding of this question so basically what we have we have two screen screen one and screen two uh, on screen one we have one next button which will redirect us to the screen two. when we click on the next button we are going on the screen two where we have one more button that is exit without save on the click of exit without save button, we have opened with a pop-up having two options, exit and back. 
So if we click on back button, we will be staying on the same page and the pop-up will get closed. But if we uh, are clicking on the exit button, we are going back to the previous screen, which is the screen one for now. So Uncock has a query string, which lets us uh, dynamically transmit the date, uh, key information over the URL. So similar approach we are going to use here. Uh, so what we, uh, like when we click on the next button, uh, as we can see, uh, our redirected URL consists of uh, this query parameter. The syntax is uh, like uh, after the concatenated of our URL, we can append question mark with the query parameter equals to the value. So let's start understand uh, the with the config. Angle. So on screen one, we have a next button, which is call, uh, calling the rule redirect. When we click on the rule redirect, uh, we are concatenating um, with the module ID, uh, like of this particular module with uh, our redirect, uh, redirected URL. So on screen two, uh, on new submission, uh, we are calling with Calci, that is Calci redirect. Uh, in this, uh, we are fetching the data from the URL that uh, using underscore query dot query parameter name, which is module ID. And we are storing this module ID in the hidden field named module ID. So as we can see, uh, here we have one button on this button using the init open pop-up. We are opening the pop-up and on back, we are simply closing this pop-up. So on exit button, we have one rule get called, which is rule exit. In this rule exit, we are in the input uh, panel. We are input table. We are using prop, uh, property ID, which uh, uh, as a module ID, which is a hidden field. And in output, we have one panel, which will let us redirect on the page, uh, previous page or any page. So uh, here we are concatenating the display with the hidden field name module ID. So here we will get this module ID dynamically from the URL. Uh, so again, uh, uh, we can see like uh, on sc uh, screen one, if you click on next, we are getting this uh, and this module ID get uh, stored in the module ID field and when we can see this on in the config console here. So we are getting this module ID, fetching the module ID field. If you click on exit, we are going back on the screen one. Uh, similar way, we want to achieve it dynamically. So let's consider just not one only uh, screen one only. We can have one more screen, which is screen two, which is built similar to the screen one. When we click on this next button, here we are concatenating the ID of the screen three. Uh, and if we click on exit button, we are going back to the screen three. That's it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, the nice thing about doing these is I imagine this functionality, this use case is gonna be one component right at the bottom of one screen, right? And if you are looking at a complex configuration of everything else on that, it might be difficult to kind of isolate how exactly to make that work. The nice thing about the POC that Moderica has built and demoed for us is we can really just focus on how do you do that functionality. Uh, so you can zero in on that, you can pull out that and, and be able to add that same type of functionality to your application. Um, with that, um, we're rolling right along here. We have two more uh, demos, and both of them are related to view grids. And we've actually seen view grids used a couple other times so far today as well. Uh, it's one of the most popular things uh, we see questions on in the community. We had some recent updates uh, to our grid functionality in our spring release. That's very exciting. So a lot of it's great to see a lot of people getting to work using um, dynamic grids and, and other new functionality. There's previous Twitch live streams where we really dived in, uh, dove into that if you wanna go and check that out. Uh, some of the things with Nick, our chief evangelist, the encoder, bringing on people to talk about that. But let's focus in on some specific use cases and functionality for uh, view grids. And up first we have uh, Monsi who is talking about putting an icon in a view grid field. So Monsi, uh, take it away. 
Thanks, Danny, for the introductions. Let me share this. Yeah. So, my problem statement for today is how to put an icon in view grid field, as Danny said. So, here we have we have to put icon in the view grid based on some specific conditions. Like, if the data one is insert, then icon should be one. If the data two is suppose different, then the icon should be uh, icon two. And here we also have one uh, screenshot available. So I have created my POC along with this. Like I have, I'm showing, um, com uh, I'm showing green uh, checkbox like for uh, for complete, cross window for fail and spinner for in progress. So let's dive into my my POC. So yeah, this is my PO this is my UI for my POC. So here I have uh, displayed two view grids. One in one I have given uh, icons with style and one is simple HTML icons. So I'm I'm showing here the state icon um, based on this status. So if as you can see, if it's complete, then we are showing the check circle. If it's in progress, we are showing spinner. If it's rejected, we are showing the window cross. And similarly for the second view grid as well, with some just styles as a color, I've given. So let's dive into the config for this thing. So here, uh, for now, I have taking just a, a static data to show inside the view grid. So here uh, with the data. Data data table. I'm showing the static data, which uh, which is coming inside the view grid. So, uh, on load, I'm triggering these two data workflows uh, for two different view, view grids. So, in first, like in the first data workflow, uh, I have the input as DT, uh, like uh, DT uh, with the status and name. So, then uh, to show the to show the icons based on some conditions, we are using create field operator inside the data workflow, which is very helpful to add any new fields if you want to show into the data uh, into the view grid so um, based on uh, based on the condition we, we need to show the icon so here we have used if else um, so he, uh, in this if else um, as you can see i've created one new field and i've given the uh, looping if, if else of like if, it, if the status is complete then i'm showing this circle check and in the else condition again we are going with the status if it's in progress then we are again showing the spinner and so on moving forward we have one more if it's if it's rejected then we are showing the window close icon so like that i'm showing this is uh like that i'm showing the view grid icon the view icons in the view grid based on this simple status similarly we are for the styling we have used different data workflow we have used the same uh, same way over here as well just in the uh, create field operator we have given some styles as you can see style color green for the complete circle check for in progress we have given um, style color green as well and for the rejected as it's rejected so it's we have given style color red so these are the two different way, approaches which i have used to um, show the icons inside of view grid and also we can have many other approaches for uh, we can uh, for the status if we want a clickable approach like we can also have that for more advanced icons so that's it from my side thank you thank you so much uh I think this is very relevant. You know, one of the things uh, that's a, an adage or an idiom is a picture is worth a thousand words. If you think about our use of technology and communication, how much emojis and symbols have become important to that. And when building an application, something like that, being able to just kind of highlight um, with color and icons and things like that is really going to point your end user to the most critical information. Uh, otherwise, you know, you can do a lot with view grid. You can put a lot of text in there, but when you have multiple columns like that, the POC there, it can all kind of blend together. So it's a great way to really showcase things. And I think this is going to be a uh, pretty frequently uh, used uh, feature. Uh, like so many of our other demos as well, we, um, we have uh, uh, some really powerful use of the data workflow tool within there as well. So data workflow, I think, is the number one uh, asked a question on the community, things about, about that. Um, dating back to when I joined Uncork a year ago, that was the case before I joined. It's been the case for the last year because there's so much you can do with data workflow to customize and, and to build these things. So I'm glad we have a couple of examples about that. So um, that leaves one more demo. Um, and this is from Srikanth. Um, and 
it is also uh, talking about view grids, but this is a little bit different is how can we download the updated file of a submission um, from a view grid? So Srikanth, uh, take it away, you're up. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, Danny, thanks. Thanks for giving this opportunity. Yeah, for, can I share, uh, I'm sharing my screen. Let me know once my screen was sharing. Yeah, we're seeing it. We're seeing the express preview. Yeah, okay. Now, basically, the question uh, which was posted on that community, this is a question regarding how can we download the upload for upload file of a submission from vGrid. So, that uh, this question regarding like when uh, the end user submitting one file on the UI page, so and that the end user has to download that UI page on the vGrid. So, for that, uh, for that, first, I'm going to give that one file on the UI page, like like this. So here I'm importing data into that submission. So I'm uploading one file here, over here. So after submitting the data, the data is uh, entered into the V grid. So this was a V grid uh, which they want in the uh, end, which they want to download the file in the V grid. So this is the V grid. So for this, after entering, uh, entering the uh, after entering the data into the, we can see here in the uh, as a configurators, we can see the data of how it it was stored. So as we know that file component is uh, store uh, component, uh, we can see that the console how it is stored. So the uh, uploaded file will be stored as an array of uh, data, name, and size, and storage, and type, and URL. So for this, uh, with this we are uh, with this URL and with this name, we are going to download this file on the vGrid. So for now, I'm jumping uh, jumping into that vGrid uh, designer page. So in this page, uh, nothing we are done. Just we are using that plugin call to get the submissions. After that, and we are using one vGrid. So in this data, we, we are we are going where we are going to show the data here over here. So and we are going to uh, so, uh, solve the issue here the, with with this uh, data workflow only. So for this. Uh, first, for this, we need to, uh, as we know here, that uh, name and name and URL. So for that, just uh, we are going to rename the uh, file URL name, file URL of zero into file URL path, or file of zero name into name. So uh, for this, before um, before, uh, before uh, so in the create before creating this new field, so we are renaming this URL of zero of your dot URL into file of zero dot name into that URL path and name. So after that, we are concatenating the both name that uh, url url and the name into the one one new create field like that link name is file link so it is the link to download where we can download the file so when we click on that uh, file link uh, the file will be downloaded regarding the uh, file will be downloading regarding the submission so uh, this is the we are, this is the option where we can download so so when we click on that, uh, which uh, now I uploaded one file. This is the file name is rv file at the, dot pdf. So now here we can download the file. So now after seeing that we can download this. File. After seeing uh, downloading the file, we can uh, able to read the file. So this is the what uh, which was a question posted on the community. So in this way, in this way we can uh, solve this solution. So thank you. This this is from my side. That's it, Danny. Great. Well, there you have it. You have uh, five demos from members of our community of questions that are actively being answered on the community. We get a number of questions a day. Uh, average response time is usually with an hour or two. Oftentimes, the, the first or second reply is the answer. We have a very active community of Uncork customers, partners, and Uncork staff answering that. Um, and it's a great way to sharpen your skills. Uh, so um, as you can see, all of these community members were helping out their, their fellow creators, uh, answering questions and things like that. And what I've heard uh, from so many people is that it's a great way to expose yourself to what's possible on the community hub, to see what other, or what's possible on Un Uncork rather, to see what other creators are asking, to see the answer, uh, to really kind of expand your use cases there. So I want to thank all of our presenters, not only for demoing today, but also uh, for their contributions to our community over the last couple of months. Um, uh, if I could ask my, my colleague who's producing this to let me share my screen one more time, just to wrap up, just want to highlight a couple more things, as I mentioned. So what's next on this Twitch live stream? Hopefully you're following us on Twitch already. If you're not following on us on Twitch, give us a follow. 
As I mentioned earlier, follow us on our social channels to get announcements about what's coming up on Twitch or on our LinkedIn live stream. So on Thursday, our next community broadcast here on Twitch, we'll also over the next couple of weeks continue to have stuff from Nick Gamble, our chief evangelist and the uncoder as well. So stay tuned for more there, but we're coming back to you from a community side of things. Later this week, you'll see me again uh, talking about our hackathon. And actually one of today's presenters, Push Barrage, is one of our finalists who will be back here with us as well. Um, so please join us uh, same time on Thursday for that live showcase. Tomorrow, um, around the same time or about midday uh, in North America is when we have, um, sorry, let me bump back to the homepage here, is when we have that LinkedIn live with our, our CEO of Uncork, uh, Gary Hoberman. It's gonna be a great conversation. And then uh, join us next month again for our next success hour. Same type of thing, but we're gonna be zeroing in on the marketplace. And um, sneak peek of what you're gonna hear on that, we're gonna talk about what's been new on the marketplace. But the great thing about the marketplace, if you're not familiar with it, we have some past live streams you can check out, or you just go to the marketplace.uncork.io. That's pre-built functionality, snippets, templates, integrations, things like that. And our marketplace team has actually been watching what are trending topics, popular questions, uh, uh, things that are needed uh, from our creators that are popping up on our community. So we're gonna be demoing a number of snippets and templates that we built to address things we are seeing on our community. So just by asking questions, answering each other's questions, you can uh, influence what gets created as marketplace templates to, to help you be able to speed up and more easily build applications in the future. Um, so that's really cool. I'm very excited about that. As I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in doing one of these demos, uh, please reach out. We'd love to have more of our community members demoing those snippets for various use cases. But otherwise, community.uncork.com uh, is where you're going to see our upcoming events, latest updates, things like that. And um, also go ahead, log in and, and participate. So thanks again to our presenters. We'll see you here on Twitch uh, throughout the week and in the upcoming weeks. And until then, we'll see you on the Community Hub. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.